to believe that in September it will be 45 years since Pope St. John Paul II came to Ireland. I was in my final year at school in Derry, and at that stage I was beginning to think seriously about the possibility of a vocation to the priesthood, so I was particularly interested in the Pope's visit. In his address to the priests of Ireland at Maynooth College, Pope John Paul said, to speak of priesthood is to speak of mission, because the Pilgrim Church is missionary by her very nature. And he went on to reflect on how Irish monks and priests in the 9th and 10th centuries had gone out on mission to rekindle the light of faith in parts of Europe. And interestingly, he mentioned that up until the 13th century, there was even an Irish monastery as far east as Kiev. My brother priests, mission is in our Irish genes. So as we renew our priestly promises today, let's also rekindle the fire of mission in our hearts. We've all been anointed by holy chrism at baptism, confirmation, and ordination. And Isaiah today reminds us in that first reading that to be anointed is to be sent. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, he writes. For the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. Some of you may have seen recently that television program which rather bleakly says that we might be among the last priests in Ireland. I disagree. Although the last 45 years has certainly seen immense change in the church and society, not only in Ireland, but right across the Western world. Back in 1980, whenever I first went to Maynooth, there were around 50 diocesan priests ministering in the parishes of the Dromore Diocese. Today, there is less than a third of that. But this is no fin de siècle moment for priesthood. Rather, it is our time to be a church in mission. Because today, more than ever, the world needs to hear the good news that Christ is alive. Christ is our hope. The opening prayer at the Chrism Mass this morning makes our mission clear. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. The profile of the clergy here in the Diocese of Dromore has evolved hugely in recent years, and we can see that this morning. And we now have priests from many different countries ministering here among us, including three Nigerian priests, two of them from a missionary society. We have two Polish priests. We have a priest from Kerala and in India, and they're all making a very significant contribution to the life of our diocese. Not to mention, of course, our religious priests, including those from the Society of African Missions. An important new development in our diocese here has been the arrival of some priests and deacons from the Archdiocese of Armagh Missionary Seminary. This was set up in Dundalk around 10 years ago, and we're preparing there seminarians from all over the world to serve as priests in Ireland and beyond. You know, of course, Father Carlos and Father Maci and Deacon Francesco, who, please God, will be ordained next month. And we're also joined amongst our clergy by four permanent deacons with four more in formation at the moment, and they are greatly helping in the mission of the church here in this place. In a few moments, we will renew our priestly promises, in which we resolve to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God, to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, and to follow Christ, our head and shepherd, not seeking any personal gain, 
but moved only by zeal for souls. My dear brother priests, let's not lose our zeal for souls. Like our ancient predecessors who went to Europe on peregrinatio pro Cristo, let us strive with the help of the Holy Spirit to rejuvenate the church here in Ireland and beyond. And we clergy, of course, are not alone in this quest. Pope Francis is currently challenging us to become a synodal church in mission and to realize that our religious and our lay women and men, by virtue of their baptism, are co-responsible with us for the church's mission. Your charisms, your gifts from the Holy Spirit are there in abundance. And they need to be identified and formed and called forth and appreciated in the church. The first session of the Synod in Rome last October put it like this. An invaluable fruit of the synodal process so far is a heightened awareness of our identity as the faithful people of God, within which each person is the bearer of a dignity derived from baptism. And each person is called to differentiated co-responsibility for the common mission of evangelization. To put it another way, we are all disciples. We are all called to holiness and we are all called to be missionaries. The mission of the church involves the entire church with the faithful, both male and female, contributing alongside the religious, the clergy and the bishops. For that reason, I encourage you, my brother priests, to make your voices heard in the synodal process. Last October, the delegates in Rome said, a synodal church cannot do without the voices of clergy, their experiences, their contribution. And I ask you also to do what you can to incorporate synodal listening into the life of your parishes and to call forward the gifts of your people so that they can be truly co-responsible with you for the life and pastoral mission of the church. After all, by baptism and confirmation, these, the people of God, along with us, are also anointed with chrism and sent. And we're immensely grateful to the very many lay faithful and religious who are already assisting us in our parishes and dioceses as parish volunteers or workers, as members of our pastoral councils, finance councils and various prayer groups and other initiatives. And many of you are here today. So I want, on behalf of all the clergy here, to thank you, my dear brothers and sisters, and bless you for your vital assistance to us in the mission of the church. We're all especially conscious this Holy Week that we live in a very fragile and troubled world where the ravages of war and violence, poverty and injustice, where we have the displacement of millions of people, where the consequences of climate change are clearly visible to us. But we are all anointed and sent, and together we are called and gifted to share the good news with a wounded humanity. Or as Isaiah put it, we're anointed and sent to bind up hearts that are broken. Something else that Pope John Paul II said when he spoke to the priests of Ireland in 1979, and I'll finish with this. He said, the work of the Lord cannot be done by lukewarm or half-hearted priests. Let me add to that, neither can it be done by lukewarm or half-hearted Catholics. He said, the fire of love, 
which Christ had for his Father and for his people, must burn in us. Christ, longing to save all people, must consume us. Let that be our prayer, our hope, and our wish on this Holy Thursday. Amen. So I'm going to pour the balsam into the chrism. And then mix it around. And then there's a long prayer of consecration. And because it's olive oil, the prayer refers to the olive tree. So listen out and you'll hear that in the prayer. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father that he bless and sanctify this oil. May those who are signed with it outwardly be inwardly anointed and made worthy of divine redemption. O God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning, you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees, would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruits might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, All this has been clearly revealed when every offense is removed through the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil makes our faces cheerful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ our Lord insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten son. And you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in Psalm, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has received the name of chrism and with it, you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Boys and girls, thank you very, very much for coming to the chrism mass. It's a very long mass, isn't it? Yeah, I thought so too. But it's a really special one because we have As you can see, this is the oil of baptism, the oil of chrism, and the oil of the sick. So whenever somebody is sick, we anoint them with that oil. This one here, baptism, as you can imagine, is used whenever a little baby comes for baptism. They get anointed with that one, but they also get anointed with chrism. So that means that you've all already been anointed with chrism. You mightn't remember, but your parents and godparents will remember. 
So you've already been anointed with chrism, and on the day of your confirmation, you'll be anointed with it again for the second time. And then it's a real strong sign of the Holy Spirit being within you. So my dear brothers and sisters, and my dear brother priests, deacons, and religious, thank you for attending our chrism mass today. We'll conclude with the final blessing. You can stay there. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and on earth. May Almighty God bless you all who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.